Krista for, for the introduction. And also I would like to thank Rene and the Zelda for coming. And today I'm going to talk about something uh, um, related to the uh, microstructure uh, associated device uh, instability. So uh, in the past, uh, in the past few years, we focused our efforts on understanding and analyzing the um, um, the uh, microstructure related device instability. And for example, that we have found um, due to the low miscibility between PC11 and PCBN and the uh, microstructure of um, this PC11, PCBN based system is not stable even in the dark at room temperature. And this is due to the demixing of an donor acceptor in the amorphous phases. And this will result in the uh, degradation in GSC. And um, as you can see here, even uh, the devices were kept in, in, in the dark at room temperature and there is a significant loss in GSC. And these losses in GSC can only be stopped by keeping the cells at low temperature. And um, then um, we also found, and for, for the cases based on um, nanothermal acceptors, because, um, because of this low miscibility, the material's low miscibility. And um, this um, will also cause a degradation, but not the GSC, but the fee factor, because compared to PCBN and the um, this non-fluorine acceptor has limited diffusion constant within the polar matrix, and it cannot um, cause such a large phase separation, uh, segregation, but uh, will reorganization or even um, recrystallize at the low temperature in these phases. And this will cause electron traps, and which causes uh, the feed factor degradation, as you can see here, this is a also, this is a small brain, but uh, we consider this is the losses and for long-term stability. If we want to get the stable and uh, efficient devices. Then um, uh, we know that um, for, for such a, a bucket drunken concept that we mixed the drawn and acceptor materials together and code and for a single layer. And um, the microstructure could uh, determine the device efficiency and the stability. And for the specific material or for a given material system, and we have to optimize the microstructure even to a more intermixed or to a coarse microstructure in order to get the high efficiency. So this is the most that people have done. But um, um, even you can get the higher efficiency, but that does, that does not mean that you can get also get the high stability. And typically, and the high efficiency and high stability couldn't be achieved at the same time. And we have developed a lot of uh, concepts and try to address this microstructure in induced instability. For example, we used these uh, solid additives, we used the phase competitors, and we we used um, um, these uh, cross linkers. We also developed organic nanoparticles, try to fix nanostructure phases. But um, then, after a long time, so we we figured out this concept has advantage, but also has the disadvantage. And we couldn't fully address the microstructure induced instability. Then we, we thought what we can do, maybe it is time to, to push this microstructure to the limit. For example, if we can mix the both stone acceptor as much as possible to get this um, fully intermixed uh, microstructure, or we can go to another direction and we, we can get fully separated devices. Uh, this concept and the one is about the single component solar cells that we link this organic donor and acceptors um, together. And another one is we go back to this bilayer solar cells. So the first concept is about this single component solar cells. So in collaboration with Professor Wei Wei Li, so we analyze the stability of a double cable column. And this is the, uh, the chemical structure and uh, called SCP3. And this is the donor part. This is the polymer donor. And this is the side chain. This is the acceptor part. This is the PDI. So the donor acceptors are linked via an um, accurate chain. And um, so we think that we will not cause um, the, the, the CVF phase segregation. So they are linked together. And in this case, we, we analyze the stability of the devices. And we figured out even at high temperature or at 
elimination or at both conditions, a device is uh, very stable and we didn't suffer any degradation. So even if we increase the temperature over 160 degree, and we didn't observe any degradation. So in collaboration with Professor Peter Boyle at the Wuhan University, and we also analyzed another type of the single component solar cells based on diets. So this is the chemical structure of the two model diodes. So diet one is based on a, a famous molecule, UU7 and the PCBM. And another one is the UU7 with PC17BM. So they don't accept a link via this, uh, this, this IQ chain together so that these uh, molecules will not suffer from the demixing of donor acceptor in amorphous phases. And to compare to this uh, a typical bucket junction concept, this is the mixture of the UU7 and the PCBM. And this is suffered from the um, degradation GAC as we typically observed for this PC11 PCBM. But by linking this molecule and PCBM together, and uh, these devices showed extremely high device stability. Even at the concentrated light, and here, and the Yakun measured the stability and um, under 7.5 suns and for over a thousand hours, and we didn't observe any uh, degradation. That means the stability is quite good. So um, then we jump to another concept. If we, uh, how about to fabricate this, um, this uh, fully separated donor acceptors in this active layer? This is the quite old concept that is developed even before this uh, bucket junction um, concept, uh, due to the, um, the high exciton diffusion lens in these um, non flowing acceptors and also in this state of the art polymers and um, these um, bilayer solar cells with a separated donor and acceptor actually is possible. So, this is the one example made by Tai Ho and who was a visiting student in our group uh, in two years ago. And uh, he managed to get uh, these um, um, bilayer devices by sequential processing, uh, these um, nephron acceptors from orthogonal solvent. And um, then uh, we, we found uh, by using such architecture, actually, we could reduce the interfaces between donor and acceptor and achieve um, comparable device efficiency. This is efficiency is over 10%. So another example is made by Di Fei, um, who is the visiting student in our group and from South China University. And by uh, using other material systems, and this barrier stru structure could also be generated even with efficiency even higher than the corresponding bucket drawing concept. And this efficiency is over 15%. So these are quite successful concept, but um, um, the limitation is, so we have to use also gunner solvent and we have to coat one layer on top of each other. And uh, that means for, for new materials, we have to develop the processing conditions for um, every time. And um, the, the dilution processing of the top layer may affect um, the microstructure of the bottom layer because um, um, also um, maybe due to the surface energy and the top layer may not be easily coated on top of the, the bottom layer. So the recent concept that we are working on um, here, this is the, we, we developed this, um, um, this bilayer structure based on water spreading method. So Rong actually coated this polymer films on the water surface by um, spread coating, by drop, dropping these uh, so solutions on top of the water surface. So this, the films will be immediately dried on the water surface and could be picked up by different substrates, for example, by glass, by ITO glass, or silicon, or other plastics. So um, then uh, she coated this um, uh, zinc oxide and also the acceptors on top of this ITO substrate and used this substrate to pick the polymers from this water surface. And uh, in this way that we are able to optimize the acceptor layer and also the polymer layer separately and without affecting uh, the macrostructure of both. So by tuning the macrostructure of this polymer, and um, actually she managed to get the comparable efficiency of these bilayer solar cells 
to uh, this corresponding uh, bucket junction solar cells with uh, similar efficiency. And as we said that we, so for such a concept, we, we minimize the, the interface between donor and receptor. And we thought that is good for the stability of the devices. And indeed, if you look at the fee factor and the, the burn-in in fee factor that is caused by the instability at the donor accept interfaces could be minimized by using this bilayer concept. So I think, um, yeah, that's it. And for my talk, uh, I, I think, uh, although this is an old concept, but I think in the current situation, it is time. It is worthwhile to revisit this concept to get the, the stable and also efficient solar cells. Thanks for opening up.